and different block spaces have different attributes and they're used for different cases. So Bitcoin is the single most secure. So right now its main use case is just Bitcoin itself. And it's perfect in that way. Ethereum, DeFi has really been the big thing. And obviously NFTs are very big, but that's also gone to Solana. Today's video features Rail Pal, a legendary investor who is also the CEO of Real Vision and a co-founder of Global Macro Investors. He discusses the reasons why he fears a recession years in advance. The bearishness of the market is exaggerated, which is why the volatility in cryptocurrency should be used, and how the business cycle is just beginning to turn up now with central banks lowering interest rates and increasing liquidity. So the volumes in ETFs are driven by two net inflows, or people known as arbitragers who are you know, arbitraging the futures market. So we don't know what that flow was. So they would sell the futures, which traded at a premium, and then buy the ETF. We don't know what that flow was, but let's assume it's net inflows because Binance saw record inflows yesterday as well. So what we're seeing is people, I think, because of the education that you've been doing, I've been doing, Michael Saylor's been doing, everybody's been doing, people are starting to understand the game. And even Larry Fink has been explaining the game. The game is the erosion of your purchasing power, not via traditional CPI inflation, but via this more pernicious debasement idea. And I think people are understanding and have been educated that this is a volatile asset class. And, you know, as I started at the beginning of the show, is if we do get sell-offs, people are starting to realize that's what I buy. You know, that same strategy worked incredibly well in the NASDAQ over the years as well. Um, you know, you've got a big secular trend, any wobbles, generally a buying opportunity. Solana. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Solana is cheap, fast, and there's a lot of innovation coming. Um, and we're seeing lots of nice, easy applications for people to use. So, you know, what drives a blockchain use? Well, nice applications, easy use, and cheapness. So it's really, really blowing out all the metrics versus other chains right now, hence why its price outperforms both Bitcoin and Ethereum. So it's been definitely the big breakout of this cycle, and I think it continues because it's getting a lot of traction. It's just a very easy-to-use chain that's very fast, and a lot of the applications are just very user-friendly. Different chains are used for different things. Ethereum is secure is probably the chosen one for the finance industry to build on top of, whether it's layer twos or whatever, because it's very secure, very well battle tested and very respective and still innovative. Solana seems like it's more for retail application and fast moving applications. Even maybe a crypto exchanges can build on the new Fire Dancer part of it because it's super fast. So I think, you know, to extract away for people watching this, like, I don't really understand this. It's really simple. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, they're all just decentralized businesses selling block space on their blockchain. And different block spaces have different attributes and they're used for different cases. So Bitcoin is the single most secure. So right now its main use case is just Bitcoin itself. And it's perfect in that way. Ethereum, DeFi has really been the big thing. And obviously NFTs are very big, but that's also gone to Solana. So valuable transactions, if banks are going to transfer hundreds of gazillions of dollars between each other, Ethereum is likely the chain of choice. Solana, for lots of rapid transactions, it's, it's the right choice. We will see other things, whether it's, you know, SUI, which is the Mistin Labs one, or Avalanche or others for gaming or for other applications like converting the old Web 2 social media into Web 3 or music. They will all find different blockchains that better suit their purpose. Therefore, as an investor, that's the thing to keep in mind. How do I stay in this trade for as long as possible and compound what is the largest? You know, if I go back to anybody and say, would you have bought the NASDAQ in 1990? Everyone would, hell yes. Well, here you've got it. 1990, not 99, 1990. You go, hell yes. Well, that's where we are now, somewhere in the mid 90s of the nasdaq so i th actually think it's a bit of a red herring because the the us dollar is the world's reserve currency the us doesn't need to hold other assets in reserve yes it's got gold but that was a legacy from leaving the gold standard 
other countries have to have reserves to support their own currencies. So they don't need it. Now, would they do it? I think it sounds flashy. For what reason? I don't really know. Um, but let's assume that they do. Let's say I'm wrong and they do build something. It's kind of a weird world because, yes, obviously it's good for the crypto market because there's yet another buyer. But it's also weird because Bitcoin was set up to try and replace the government's control over money. And now you're inserting the government as one of the largest buyers of private money. I don't really like that, actually. But, you know, but it's probably net positive for the crypto price. Now, maybe it pu pushes private use of money away from Bitcoin, if that were the case. In the past week, Bitcoin has submitted two separate death crosses with success. The commercial community has not yet noticed this worrying development. Four trend lines are included in the death crosses. The 50-day and 200-day simple moving averages, the 21, 50, 100, and 200-day simple moving averages have since mirrored the downward sloping 21-day 7 eyes recent crossing below the 100-day counterpart. The Bitcoin bulls could not avoid the second death cross. Renowned trader Benjamin C. previously stated that, given the volatility of the cryptocurrency markets, a daily close above $62,000 would be required to prevent more death cross issues in the future. On August 11th, Keith Allen, co-founder of Trading Resource Material Indicators, uploaded a brief video analysis to confirm an earlier commentary. Allen described the death crosses as not the end all, but rather as a sign that bullish volatility still has the ability to cancel out the consequences again. Until then, you'll have to wait and see. It's strange to see the most current data from the cryptocurrency fear and greed index, with large swings that illustrate the unpredictable nature of on August 6th, fear and greed in the market exceeded even the reaction to the FTX crash at the end of that year, reaching their lowest values since July 2022. In a matter of days, the subsequent BTC price rally took sentiment from acute anxiety to neutral, rising to 481 100 before falling once more. Because of this, even though there hasn't been a comparable drop in price, as of August 12th, there is still a great deal of dread around cryptocurrencies. NFTs are probably the most powerful technology in the whole crypto space. In a world where everything digital goes to zero in value, because you can make more of it, nothing can maintain value. What an NFT does is create digital scarcity and thus digital value. It also is a mechanism of storing and transferring ownership of something, a digital right, a contract. So the NFT craze of, you know, monkey JPEGs and stuff, that was just the first iteration of using the technology. Some of those things, digital art, I think is going to be extremely valuable over time. But this technology is going to be used for all sorts of things, whether it's global ticketing or digital ID or We've seen California start to adopt it for your car deeds. I think we'll use them for property deeds. I think we'll use them for derivative contracts. So NFTs as a technology haven't even started. They will be so pervasive that you won't even know that every ticket you go to an event is an NFT. Every contract that you have will be an NFT. Most securities that you might trade may be NFTs, but some of the art, and I've been collecting people like XCopy and Beeple, these people are cultural artists that are very relevant to this time, and I think they'll be very valuable over time. So it's going to be bi a bifurcation as ever, but the best assets win. Okay, next question. Do you think the new Democratic ticket, okay, and we're recording now where it's now a, a Harris Waltz, this is Tim Waltz, the governor of Minnesota, is on the ticket. So it's a Harris Waltz ticket is better for crypto or the same as with Biden at the top. This is Jeff from Boston. I don't think we've been given any guidance yet. So as of today, we don't really know. It was very interesting because the Democrats reached out to a bunch of people in the crypto space and they reached back and said, listen, we're not going to talk unless you agree to certain things to undo some of the damage that you've done. Yes. We've not heard anybody come back yet with a concrete decision that they will reverse course on this. The price of Bitcoin can surge and reach new heights. Bitcoin is moving inside a descending, expanding triangle, according to a cryptocurrency trader. Article about crypto on August 12th, 
Trader Tardigrade reported that the price action of Bitcoin so far this year has formed a falling expanding wedge on a 2E chart. Technical chart patterns known as descending expanding wedges are formed during downtrends and feature two diverging lines connecting lower highs and lows. An upside breakout is confirmed by a clean breach of the wedge barrier. He claimed that after breaking out of this pattern in 2020, Bitcoin rallied 580 to reach its all-time high of $69,000 in 2021. When this pattern was broken, dollar BTC increased from about $10,000 to about $70,000. Autonomous trader Roman described this week's closing as robust, exhibiting a bullish divergence, and predicted that a sustained rally in price will eventually occur. Buyer interest in the cryptocurrency market is lower than it was after the FTX crisis, despite these optimistic outlooks. Thank you for viewing independent trade publications.